Go ahead and turn your Bibles to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 27. 1 Samuel chapter 27. Set up and get there myself. <clears throat> 1 Samuel chapter 27. And we're going to go ahead and begin reading in uh, verse 1. I got a lot of a lot of scripture, not a lot, but you know, in 10 minutes it's going to be a little bit. So we got to, I'm going to fly through this and everything. But 1 Samuel chapter 27, starting in verse 1, the Bible says, And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines. And Saul shall despair of me to seek me any more in any coast of Israel, so shall I escape out of his hand. And David arose and he passed over with the six hundred men that were with him unto Achish, the son of Maok, king of Gath. And David dwelt with Achish at Gath, he and his men, every man with his household, even David with his two wives, and Hinnom the Jezreelitess, and Abigail the Carmelitess, Nabal's wife. And it was told Saul that David was fled to Gath, and he sought no more again for him. And David said unto Achish, If I have now found grace in thine eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the country that I may dwell there. For why should thy servant dwell in the royal city with thee? Then Achish gave him Ziklag that day, wherefore Ziklag pertaineth unto the kings of Judah unto this day. And the time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was a full year and four months. Let's pray real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would just uh, help me to utilize this time wisely and get this message out to the brethren. And I pray that you would just use me, Lord God, to say what needs to be said. And uh, that you would just continue to be with this church. And we ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So I want to direct your uh, attention real quick back to verse number 1. 1 Samuel chapter 27, verse number 1. And this, is the, this, this part of the story is where David is obviously fleeing from King Saul. He's been fleeing from King Saul. He's living out of caves. He's living in tents. He's just like constantly trying to get away from King Saul, right? So I think that David is actually in a very backslidden state. Even given the circumstances, you know, I personally believe he's in a very backslidden state. And the, way that, the reason I say that is because, you know, he's already been anointed by Samuel. And yet he starts to kind of lose faith, it seems like, in what God has already told him is going to transpire. He flees into the nation of the Philistines. He flees into the, uh, where the Philistines are. So he's going back into the, he's going into the world. He's got multiple wives, as we see in verse 3. And then in verse 8 and 9, which we didn't even read, he's plundering and killing women and children of all these nations that are actually enemies of the nation of Israel. And we'll talk about that in a second if we get some time. But he's doing a lot of like kind of wicked things right here. And the, 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 the title of the sermon is Characteristics of a Backslider, okay? Number one, all right, backsliding usually starts with discouragement. Now, how did this, how did this like, come into, in, into being? David is constantly being bombarded by attacks from Saul. And I think he's just starting to get discouraged. It's just like this constant discouragement. And, and, it, and, it, and if you look at verse 1, it says, And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. Now it's almost like he forgot about all the times that God rescued him from imminent danger. You know, he's starting to think about the things, he's, he's starting to use his own heart to decipher what's true and not true. And backsliding, it starts with discouragement, it always starts in your heart. Always starts in your heart. A lot of people ask when they're, they're, they're dealt with certain situations in life, you know, should I trust the counsel of my pastor? Should I trust the counsel of my brethren? Should I trust the counsel of my family? I just, it's in my heart, I feel this way. But the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Amen. Who can know it? The last thing that you should do when you're struggling with certain situations is trust your heart. That's the last thing that you should do. I just feel like this is the best thing. And that's what it seems like David is doing here. You don't trust your heart. You never trust your heart. Okay? If you don't watch your heart, you can end up extremely backslidden just like David. You can go to church three times a week. You can, you can read all the Bible you want. Okay? But there's a such thing as being a complete Christian. And any time pastor talks about this a lot, you're either going up or you're going down. Period. Right? Period. Okay? And you need to make sure that if, when you go through those valleys, you need to find a hill to climb. You need to find somewhere to climb and you need to start moving back up. Don't stay down in the valley. Okay? So, 
Long before you quit church, long before you quit soul winning, long before you quit reading your Bible, your heart's backslidden. Number two, David started losing trust. We've talked about this already a little bit, but it's a little bit separate from the heart issue. He starts losing trust. For, uh, 1 Samuel chapter uh, 27, verse 1, And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. Go with me to 1 Samuel 26, verse 12. 1 Samuel 26, verse 12, the Bible says, So David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's holster, and they got them away, and no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awaked. Why? For they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord was fallen upon them. So who was the one who preserved them here? The Lord. If you go back to 1 Samuel chapter 17, right, the story of David and Goliath, Goliath was delivered in his hands by the Lord. And he had trust that God would do that. So God is constantly delivering him. And he starts to lose trust in, or he starts losing faith in what God has already promised is going to transpire. Tell me in your Bibles in Hebrews chapter 1. See, another characteristic of a backslider is they start to lose faith or trust in the promises of God. Now, obviously, we're not talking about salvation here. Once you're saved, you're always saved. That's an understood you. But... We live life by faith. Everything you do as a born-again, baptized believer is through faith. That's why we go to this church. That's why we go soul winning. That's why we preach the gospel. That's why we read the Bible. That's why we teach our children because we believe this book. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Look at verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. The second characteristic people lose trust. Verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. People always want to see it. And then if they don't see it immediately, they start to lose faith. Why? That doesn't even make any sense to me. And, and we all struggle with this. We all struggle with this. Look uh, two verses up in Hebrews 10.38. Now the just shall live by faith. Right? That's how we live. We live by faith. And everybody wants to be uh, comfortable. They want certainty and stability. But God does not give us that in this life. Right? He doesn't give us, and I'm talking about the physical, the physical things. Why? Because this world is not our home. He doesn't want us to be rooted in the things of this world. And obviously the flesh is constantly trying to look for the stability. We're trying to, we want that certainty, but we're not supposed to be rooted here, right? So if you're looking for that, your heart's not right. That's not where you're supposed to be. That's not what God has for your life. There's work to do, and you need to focus on the things of God and not the things of this world. Go back with me to 1 Samuel chapter 27 real quick. 1 Samuel chapter 27, I'm trying to hurry here. And I want you to look at this middle part of verse number 1 again. Notice what he says right here, and this is very interesting. And David said in his heart, I shall not perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines. He says there's nothing better for me than that I should just go and be in the land of the Philistines. Right? He's already made up his mind. You know, there's no counsel he's going to take. He's fleeing from Saul. He's in a backslidden state. And now he's going into the world and he's saying, that's the best thing for me. That's the best thing that I can do is just go and be with the Philistines, right? So when bitterness enters into your heart, a lot of times there's nothing that can be said that's going to change it. You've already made up your mind because you're, you, you're going to reject the counsel of God. I can say every Bible verse in the book to you because your heart's not right. You're not going to receive it. Backslidden people, they often flee from the things of God. They're not trusting in God. They, they, they lost faith. But Proverbs 3, uh, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. So go with me real quick uh, back to 27. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 27, verse uh, 8 through 12. So remember, it starts in your heart. It always starts in your heart. Number two, people lose faith in Christ. Or they not lose faith. In, they lose their trust in the promises of God, right? They start to rely on their own understanding. But, and I'm not going to read this for, for sake of time. But if you look at chapter, you can look at this by yourself. If you look at verses 8 through 12, David's attacking the enemies of Israel. And then he goes and tells King Achish that he was attacking their enemies. But he's actually playing the middle here. He's actually playing both sides, okay? There's nothing God can't stand more, according to the Bible, than someone who is lukewarm. 
He can't stand it. He, can't, he, said, he says right here in Revelation chapter 3, Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, he says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither hot, or that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. God can't stand a lukewarm Christian. And if you used to be hot, and now you're lukewarm, and I'm speaking to myself too, you need to get back on fire for God. Period. Right? So, number three. People start to, they want, they start living their life for material things. Material things. Right? Starts in the heart. They lose faith in the promises and they start living their life for material things. In verses 8 through 9, David, he's pillaging, he's killing people, and he's taking all the spoil. And you'll notice, you'll notice that he actually, Achish gives him Ziklag. He says, hey, I just want to, I want a city. Why? Because he's tired of being broke. He's tired of being poor. He's tired of running. So he gives him a city, and he's, he's starting to live for the things of this world. And I don't really have time to delve into that part. I wanted to go deeper into that. But I want to leave you with these uh, last two verses real quick. I'm sure I'm probably already over my time. I apologize, Pastor. Please forgive me. But it says right here in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Right? They start living for material things. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. You need to choose this day whom you're going to serve, friend. And it shouldn't be the things of this world. The most important things in life are the things of God. And it starts right here at the local New Testament church. So I had a little bit more, but I just want to make sure that Everybody here understands we need to guard against being backslidden. We need to guard ourselves against being lukewarm. And we need to finish our race. We need to, you know, fight the good fight and we need not to back down. If you're in a valley, find a hill to climb it. All right? Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you uh, for the opportunity to stand behind this pulpit, Lord God, and, and uh, just preach to the brethren. I pray that it was received well.